Good morning, everyone. Good morning, GDP family. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for joining us for today's uh, worship celebration. I know it's been a very difficult uh, year, last year, right? And um, it's been very difficult, right? We're still here. We're, st we're still here. Uh, we're still in lockdown here in Ontario, and. Uh, we never know when it's going to be lifted up. Lifted up. So, um, well, I think as Christian, all we can do is to rely on His Word, right? To rely on God's promises. He said that uh, He will never leave us nor forsake us, right? He's our helper. He's our strong tower. So, I think that's more than enough to give us hope and peace on this earth. So, before we start our service, Please join me in reading his word. Uh, it, can be, it can be found in Psalms chapter 147, verses 1 to 11. Verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. How good is it to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Verse 4 he determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Verse 6. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Verse 7. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He converts the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rains and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young raven when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the, ho the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warriors. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in this on his unfailing love. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God in heaven, um, we bless your name, we praise your name, we glorify your name. Hallelujah. Our our great and awesome God, hallelujah. You deserve all the glory and praises, O Lord. We praise you, O Lord God. We lift up your name on high. Praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Father God, as we come to your throne of grace, we ask you, Father God, to forgive, forgive us, O Lord, from all of our iniquities, O Lord God, for all of our sins, Father God, on anything that is not right on you, Father God. Lord, forgive us, O Lord God, because you said in your word, uh, if we confess our sin, O oh Lord God, you are faithful and just to forgive, to forgive us, Father God, and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. And we claim those words, Father God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything, Father God, that you have done in our lives, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings, for the protection of Father God, for your guidance, Panginoon. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray, for you. We pray to you, Father God, this Sunday service, O oh Lord God. We pray to you, O Lord God, uh, the man that you will be used, Father God, to um, preach your word, O Lord God. Lord, continue to bless your servant, O Lord God. May your words, Father God, be spoken, O Lord God, with power, O Lord God, and with anointing. And for us that will hear your word, O Lord God, Father, continue to uh, um, cleanse our mind, O Lord God, cleanse our heart, O Lord God, that we may be able to be, not just be a hearer, O Lord, of your word, but to be a doer of your word, O Lord God. Lord, bless our praise and worship team. Bless our um, media media team, O oh Lord God. Bless each and every one of them, O oh Lord God. Father, we bless, uh, I pray, O oh Lord God, for the um, all the leaders of GDP, Panginoon. Father God, may you continually uh, give them wisdom, O oh Lord God, and understanding coming from you, Father God, so that they can lead us, Father God, uh, to the way you want us to go as a church, Panginoon. Father, I pray for all the ministries in the church, O oh Lord God. Bless each and every one of the ministry, Father God, and all the leaders of the ministry. Father, we entrust everything to you. And um, please, Father God, um, may your will be done in the church of GTP, O oh Lord God. May your will, may your will be done, O oh Lord God. We bring back to you, O oh Lord God, all the glory, honor, and praises. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all of these things. Amen and amen. Happy New Year, everyone.
Good morning, church. How are you all doing today? I hope you guys are doing great. Um, we may still not be together physically, but we're going to unite today in worship as we worship uh, our Father in heaven. Because He is great and He's going to do a lot of things for us this coming year. Um, so just gather around with your family or if you're by yourself, just prepare our hearts. So, Father, we welcome you. We accept you, Father, and I pray for the Holy Spirit to just flow in each and every one of our homes.
So 
started. And the beautiful thing is that we get to see your creation. We get to see you move in our lives. So God, we surrender it all to you. Both hands, both arms up in the air. We surrender it to you completely. Because you are our Father who knows what's best for us. Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Sister Virgie. Um, don't you know that GDP have a prayer ministry? Yes, we have prayer warriors praying for you every Saturday at 9 to 11 a.m. It's a weekly prayer meeting. So, uh, with this, first, I invite you to join us. Our virtual meeting. We're sending the links through our prayer corner. And second, I want to invite you and encourage you to send your prayer requests. Uh, we have a, um, a spot created for that prayer requests as announced by Ed. Or if you want, you can text me or one of the leaders for your prayer requests. Thank you and God bless. Hello everyone, Sister Cecile here inviting you to join our Women's Ministry Bible Study and Fellowship every Sunday 3 p.m. on Google Meet. Currently, we are studying 30 Life Principles by Charles Stanley. This is a study for growing in knowledge and understanding of God. And thank you, Sister Evelyn, for facilitating this Bible study group. Uh, we are all excited to see you. Invite your friends as well. And if you'd like to have a free book, please let me know. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. See you all on Sunday, 3 p.m. Bye. Hi to all GDP men of God and friends. What a great thing to be one in fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ and to strive more closer to Him. Let us move forward by sharing His goodness and experience the goodness and love for our Lord Jesus Christ through His Word. Through this fellowship, we can cherish one another, watch over another, and comfort one another. So I encourage everyone to join the fellowship every Sundays at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We will send you the link at GDP Members Chat and GDP Men's Fellowship account. See you, and may the Lord bless you and your families. Hey young professionals, Ed here. Just inviting you to our Wednesday's Bible study. It's on Google Meets at 8 p.m. every Wednesday. So join us at 8 p.m. Google Meets and see you there. Hello to everyone. Hello especially to GDP University students and college students. I would like to invite all of you to attend our every other week Bible study. It happens either Sunday or Saturday. We have been learning a lot of things about the Lord and we have been deepening our knowledge about uh, the foundations of our faith. And we would like to share this with you guys, especially in your very young age. So again, if you are a university student or a college student, I would like you to, I would like to invite you to our Bible study. Please uh connect with me you can send me a private message or you could re reach me by a, a gdp members chat gdp middle schoolers i would like to invite you to join us every other friday at 5 p.m 
via Google Meets for fellowship and to study the Word of God together. If you would like to know more information or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Good day, friends. A lot has changed since the electric clock uh, was invented in the 1840s. Uh, we now keep time on our smartwatches, uh, smartphones, and laptops. Uh, the entire pace of life seems to uh, be much, much faster, uh, with even our leisurely walking speeding up. This is uh, especially true in cities and can have a negative effect on our health, as scholars would say. Uh, we're just moving faster and faster and getting back to people as quickly as we can. Life is a rush. Um, there is what we call the tyranny of the urgent. And even uh, Professor uh, Richard Wiseman observed this and he said, the, what that's driving us to think to think that everything has to happen now. Um, but what is really uh, our state of mind at the start of 2021? Um, over the holidays, you probably have taken it easy, and um, for some of us, we've been through some very difficult times as well. Um, but I would like to uh, speak today to two groups of people, basically. One uh, group um, who were feeling kind of like in a free fall, you know, when life has come to a limbo, feeling like there's no rhythm, there's no routine. The kind of, kind of, uh, there's this huge, this huge sense of disorientation, and it's hard to get motivated during this time. And yet, there's things to be done, uh, especially as we go back to work or go back to school. Well, I also have something to say for those group or the other group who feel maxed out, who feel burdened, burnt out, or maxed out. I, I want to talk to you, to both of you groups that, that are feeling in, uh, in a free fall, in a limbo, but also those who are frazzled, those who are feeling burnt out. The scriptures uh, that I want to take you to, it can be found in the book of Proverbs. And in these Proverbs that we're going to look at, we can find some wise words uh, that could that make us make the most of our time, that the time that God has given all of us. So today I would like to talk to you uh, making the most of our time and uh, but before we do that I would like to ask to pray dear God I pray for those who are listening today I pray for myself for those who are listening this is a very um, um, opportune time for some of us who are feeling kind of like in a free fall and and we're still trying to um, to find our way back but for those also who uh, who are feeling burnt out, who who feel that their time is chaotic at times, I pray that you will use your words in Proverbs today just to challenge us and help us to be more faithful that, that we may use and redeem the time for indeed the days are evil. Teach us to number our days. Uh, this we ask. In Jesus' name, Amen. So today we will start off with uh, Proverbs chapter 24. And then we'll work through some of the verses, the passages that we have in Proverbs. But we'll start with Proverbs 24, specifically verses 30 to 34. Let me read them for you. Come along and follow along with me. It says there... Um, 
says uh, I've um, so that's verse verses thirty to thirty four of chapter uh, twenty four. Follow along with your Bibles if you have them and also in the screen that will be shown. So it says there, um, I pass by the field of the sluggard and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense. And behold, it was completely overgrown with thistles. Its surface was covered with nest nestles and its stone wall was broken down. When I saw, I reflected upon it. When uh, I looked and received instruction, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then your poverty will come as a robber and your want like an armed man. So, we see here, um, in these verses, um, the writer of Proverbs refers to someone called the sluggard, someone who is lazy, someone who is um, uh, uh, of the sluggard, and we're given a picture of the sluggard and his lifestyle and his lack of discipline. Um, if you go through the book of Proverbs, you'll find through a, a number of sections that talks about the sluggard. And you know what you'll find? Some of, some of the passages about the sluggard almost seem comical. Um, you just kind of read it and laugh and shake your head. Uh, another sample of that is, one sample, example of that is um, about the verse that says about the sluggard when he says, there is a lion outside. So that may be a good excuse for you to maybe call your boss on Monday or not. Uh, don't do that. Um, it's a, but it is a good excuse for those people who just want to stay indoors and not go uh, outside to do anything. But um, some passages, though, about the sluggard, it's not just comical, but it's convicting. Why? Because you, sometimes you, you read it and you see a little bit of, of that personality in yourself. So in the book of Proverbs, um, what does it talk about when we talk about sluggard? I want to show you four things that describes a sluggard. Take a look at this picture of a sluggard and ask yourself, does it look like me at all? Do I see myself in that picture at all? Here's the first one. Sluggard is characterized by small surrenders. That's the first thing. The sluggard makes many small surrenders. Many more small surrenders. Uh, we can find that in verse 33. It says there, uh, verse 33, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And did you notice the word there that's repeated three times in one verse? The word little, little, just a little sleep, just a little slumber, just a little folding of the hands to rest. In other words, the writer of Proverbs is saying that this guy, makes a lot of little surrenders, a lot of small surrenders, um, just a short siesta, a short nap. Um, I I'm just going to hit the snooze button. It's not big choices. It's just, it doesn't say, uh, like, uh, it doesn't say, I'm not going to work at all. The slugger says, I'm not going to work just yet. I'm going to work, yes, but just not now. It's interesting as you um, uh, go through this picture. This this small this small surrenders will eventually pile up to be a habit in his life. You see, these little choices, 
the small surrenders will add up to a lifestyle to a habitual pattern um, we'll let's look at the passage here chapter 26 verse 14 the door turns on its hinges so does a sluggard on his bed see um, it, it just gonna talk about uh, the sluggard you know just just making a choice to do a little bit more sleep to hit the snooze button see um, um, there's a story um, about a friend of mine who talked about uh, his friend uh, they used to work in a um, uh, in a uh, camp Christian camp and they were both staff so his name was Charlie and Charlie's friend um, he, he would name their bunk beds uh, different names and um, uh, his friend Charlie eventually named his bed his own bed uh, the word so um, during the one of the meetings um, he um, he in the meeting they were talking about what were they were going to do next and um, I knew what um, I, the, 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 my friend knew what he was going to do he he was going to say something that would um, deceive everyone so as he nicknamed his, his bed the word he'll say oh I think I'm going to spend a little time with the word and so I knew what he was meaning when he said that. Um, it's funny because, you know, we all, if you think about it, we all need a little rest. We all need a little bit of siesta in our lives. But then, these small surrenders, these, these um, little surrenders, the little choices that we make, uh, it, will, um, it will make us uh, go into a pattern or a habit, a bit well pattern that will um, make us suffer later on so that's the first characteristic uh, characterized by small surrenders so the small surrenders will lead us to the second characteristic which is missed opportunities missed opportunities the, sm the sluggard makes many small surrenders that will lead to many missed opportunities mm -hmm. Now, I get that when we look at our passage and we get back to ver chapter 24, verse 30. It says, I passed by the field of the sluggard. And verse 31, um, it was all overgrown with thorns and stone walls. Um, even then, evidently, if you read this, stone walls was broken down. So, Evidently, because of his small surrenders, and he's, he, he delays what he was supposed to do, um, he, it eventually led him to some missed opportunities. In Palestine, for example, um, the, the time you get your vineyard ready, if you have a vineyard, uh, the time to get them ready is early spring. Uh, that was the rainy season, but it's also the time that you go out and you plow the ground. You would prepare it. You would tend the vines. You would. Um, you have to get things ready. The problem is the sluggard didn't do it, um, and so when harvest comes, it will just be metals and thorns there are missed opportunities um, there's a commentary on proverbs that says the slugger deceives himself by the smallness of his surrenders and so by inches and minutes his opportunities slip away he loses it by inches by minutes these are missed opportunities but if you confront this guy who is a slugger you would come to the third characteristic 
small surrenders, missed opportunities, it will eventually lead to big excuses. The guy, the sluggard, makes big excuses. So if you were going to talk to him, he would just say, listen, listen, I'm just going to take a little nap. I'm just going to rest for a bit. He always has excuses. It's interesting that um, he can talk himself out of anything, but the only one who believes his excuses is, his, is himself. Let's go back to chapter 26, verse 16. Chapter 26, verse 16 says, The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. In other words, um, he, believes, he believes his own excuses, but he's wiser in his own eyes. And um, then seven people who can give him a sensible answer. Somebody once said, the biggest lies that you can ever tell are the lies we tell ourselves. Like we excuse ourselves. We make excuses for ourselves. Uh, other people see through it. So what does a sluggard look like? Small surrenders leading to missed opportunities followed by um, big excuses. And so finally we see a fourth characteristic, unfulfilled desires. Unfulfilled desires. That characterizes a sluggard's life. That's where it, end, uh, it ends up eventually. See, in chapter 24, verse 34, you know, a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, Verse 34, it says, And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. You see the picture? You see, you think everything is chill. Everything is cool. Uh, and then suddenly, it's not fine. Suddenly, it's not chill. Suddenly, everything goes wrong. You know, bad situations come in like an armed robber or an armed man. And you see this, uh, especially in the recent events, um, where uh, we see in the United States, the capital, where uh, during the BLM protests, the Black Lives Matter protests, when they were told that some protesters were going to uh, start some kind of riot near the capital, they prepared themselves by bringing in the, uh, the army, bring, bringing in the the. Um, uh, the homeland security and all and um, everything was secured around the capital but then they let up eventually like the what happened in, in the past couple of days uh, they knew that they, all these protesters uh, pro-Trump protesters will be coming to the capital and yet they didn't prepare for it the sergeant at arms of the capital of the Senate and the Congress uh, didn't uh, see this coming that they were ransacked they were uh, the people were forcibly uh, entered and um, breached the security lines and they were able to enter into the hallowed halls of the Senate and Congress uh, this was unprecedented why did that happen all because they were not prepared they took it lightly So, we can see here, um, the sluggard is characterized by an undisciplined life, which leads to an unproductive life, which leads to an unhappy life. He's not happy with himself. At the end of the day, he's not happy. Um, and other people, too, are not happy with the sluggard. In chapter 10, uh, verse 26 let me read it to you other people don't like the sluggard either so is a sluggard so like vinegar to the teeth like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes so is a sluggard and those who send him like people who rely on the sluggard, they're not happy either. It's like vinegar to the teeth. It's like smoke to your eyes. And you, when you stop and blink, that's what the sluggard's like to people. 
And can I say to you, especially for those who are preparing for a lifetime of serving Christ, of serving God in the church, when we look for people who want uh, to join our team, our ministry teams, um, we probably will think twice about hiring or getting people, volunteers, um, who, who always make excuses or making small surrenders or having missed opportunities. Because um, many people count, would count on them and they will be disappointed. So let's ask ourselves now, is this me? Do I see myself in the picture? Do I see myself at the start of 2021 doing the things that a sluggard would do? Let's just do a self-reflection right now, a little search. Oh, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I'm going to get to do the goals or new resolutions that I initially had. And, and um, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get that done. And you are confident in yourself. And um, uh, I'm just going to put it off right now. I will eventually get there. I don't feel sharp right now. I'm going to delay it a little bit until I'm on top of my game. Friends, lots of, of uh, small surrenders. Uh, just one more, one more video game. Just one more episode of Netflix. Just one more uh, check or browse in social media. One more post in social media, Facebook, Instagram. So you see yourself in that situation and you probably lead to eventually some missed deadlines for the students, some missed opportunities for some of us who are working. Um, and you probably excuse yourself and say, well, hey, it wasn't really my fault. You know, things just didn't go right. You know, there's COVID. There's all these other things that we can put the blame on. And so what does that lead to? Um, it would lead to unfulfilled desires. I'm not happy with myself. God is not happy with me. You see, a sluggard is somebody who's He just makes a lot of small compromises, a lot of small surrenders that leads them to a place that is not pleasant at all. Now, it might be this guy who says, okay, okay, um, um, I see a lot of these characteristics in me. What do I do? How do I stop it? How do I turn this around? Um, especially during a pandemic. Um, I'm, for example, you're living in your own now. Uh, you have no rhythm. You, you, you got no structure, and you don't have your your age group, your men's, your women's. You cannot attend frequently, and all these other supports that you used to have that you don't have now. How do you do it? How? How can you stay on this? Well, let's go back to Proverbs and I want to share with you three wise pieces of advice. Um, three things that would help us not to be in, in the, uh, like the sluggard. There's more than three, but there's three would be enough, I suppose, that, that will help us, that will help you and I um, to, to get rid of the slugger that is in us. So, first thing. First thing. Treat this as a character issue, not just a time management issue. Let me say that again. If you really want to get rid of the slugger in you, 
you're going to have to treat this as a character issue, not just a time management issue. In other words, this is just about not just about getting more organized. Um, I say that because Proverbs says in Proverbs 15, verse 19, uh, Proverbs 15, 19. Let me show you a verse that shows you, shows us this is a character issue and it's more than a time management issue. The way of sluggard is like a hedge of thorns in the path of the upright in a highway. So let's see the contrast there. In fact, if you uh, understand a little bit about Hebrew poetry, um, Hebrew poetry uses a technique called parallelism. And in our case, Proverbs, uh, there's often two lines that's like in a poem. The first line makes a statement, and then the second line comes along and makes a statement that's related to the first. Sometimes it just adds to, to what the meaning of the first statement was, or sometimes it's a contrast. Proverbs 15.19 is one of those contrastive parallelism. Um, and what it contrasts is the way of the sluggard um, it's like a hedge of thorns. A way of sluggard is like a hedge of thorns. So, you know, um, but the path of the upright is a level highway. That's, it will get you to where you want to go. But here's the contrast I want you to see. Um, look at what contrast the sluggard with. In verse 19 it says, the sluggard is contrasted with what? With the upright. With the upright. Did you see it? The way of sluggard is the hedge of thorns and the path of the upright. So, so the opposite of being a sluggard here is being upright. Upright means being godly. It's talking about your character. Which means that being a sluggard somehow relates to your character it's not just a time management issue here and something that you probably are all good at but it's more than that if if you want to see uh, real progress in this area friends we you want to deal with the sluggard and we have to see it not as uh, just a time management issue but it's a character issue because that's when you start to make changes and you tell you tell god god you have to change me lord you have to transform me i cannot do it by myself you're gonna have to help me um, so first thing is you have to see this as a character issue, not just a time management issue. So this would lead us to the second thing. If you want to deal with the sluggard in you, we look at number two. Live by the rhythms that God has built into creation. Here's how you get out of this. You start living by the rhythms God has built into creation. See, God has built in some rhythms into creation. And if you live by those, then you, you won't end up being a sluggard. Let's go to the passage in chapter 24 and let me show you what I mean. God has put some rhythms into creation that this man, the sluggard, um, was ignoring. He was missing it. For example, there was the rhythm of planting and harvesting. There's a rhythm of seasons, in other words. There's a season for planting and a time or a season for doing the vines, getting everything ready. See, the sluggard missed out on these things. Um, he, he should have been working 
so that by harvest time he will shall en- he will enjoy the fruit so the rhythm of seasons and then there's also the rhythm of day and night god has made the day god has made the night and and um, god tells us sleep sleep at night and work during the day but but then this sluggard doesn't live by that rhythm um uh when it's daytime he's saying well i need a little bit of nap i need a little bit of rest during the day and then there's the rhythm of just sabbathing you know you you work six days and you rest on the seventh you cannot work seven days a week and if and if you want to get out of being a sluggard uh, one way of getting out of that is saying let lord let me live to live by the rhythm you have built into creation so what does that mean for us for you students who are coming back to school um for a lot of you young people who are listening you probably have turned uh, day into night and night into day and you've uh, there's been some some uh, structure in your life that you used to have you probably messed that all up during the holidays and so um, somebody says that when it comes to productive study uh, for most of us one hour in the morning is worth two hours in the afternoon in other words you're sharper you're sharp you're sharper you're fresher in the morning um, when when you have no rhythm when you, your life has been a- appended you um, you need to establish them there's rhythms working a certain time find a certain place where you could be most productive set some time set some structure set some parameters in your life so that um, uh, after you've been most productive in the morning for example then you've done all your work then you can have some time to rest later in the day you can relax later set some healthy rhythms now i mentioned that in the beginning that there are some of you who are in the opposite extreme you are feeling uh, uh, frazzled you are feeling like you're in a free fall and um, and because of the pandemic you had gonna you worked uh, you had to work extra hours and you feel burnt out and if you're ministry if you're serving in the church and you feel uh, overburdened it seems like you've been doing all the work and uh, some people have been um, uh, resting and not having been active in ministry you you're you feel frazzled you feel you feel you have so much going on so much in your plate and um, you can't make a balance between um, the right balance between life and work and family time and say listen proverbs will still have a word for you live according to the rhythms god has placed into creation see if you try to sustain an unsustainable schedule eventually you will break god's built into the rhythm of creation there's sabbath he has given us a sabbath as a gift six days you shall labor and one day it's it's a time for you to rest to worship and reflect and for some of you you work you work more than eight hours a day more than 16 hours a day seven days a week and eventually things will catch up to you um, there was a time in my life when I thought I was exempt in this um, 
when I started seminary school, um, trying to study, uh, being equipped for the ministry, I also accepted the position to be a church planter. And when they didn't have anyone to lead, I was made a lead. And um, I accepted that because I felt uh, special at that time and that I could do those things. But then I also have a growing family. Uh, my kids were small. They were becoming teenagers. And so I didn't have that proper balance, work-life ministry balance that God wants us to have. And so um, there were times that I would, um, many times that I would just not have enough time for my family. And I remember um, I, I also was working part-time. And so there was a time when I came home and I remember uh, my, my, uh, my eldest, she was still a toddler then. And my wife was uh, was uh, about to give birth to my second. I remember my daughter not knowing me when I came home. I was trying to have her recognize me as her dada, as her dada. But she doesn't seem to recognize me. And that made me really think and reflect. Why am I doing all this? And yet, in the end, I would lose my own family. I would lose being uh, having that opportunity to be a witness for my family. I'm not a good testimony anymore. See, I thought I was justified in being busy in ministry. And I thought I was justified in everything that I was doing. And um, I always had that low-grade illness physically and um, there was a time after that a few months after that in a conference there was an opportunity to take some one-to-one -to -one counseling session with one of the speakers and so I spoke to him and shared to him what my situation was he he advised me he said something that was very radical um, he said this he told me you will take one day of rest one day in a week you cannot be on your phone um, you have to take that day as a rest day you, you, you needed to rest and so for the first time in my adult life when I followed that instruction, when I sat, began to Sabbath, practice the Sabbath, you know what happened? I stopped getting sick. I felt better. I feel more energized. So my question is this. Are you Sabbathing? Um, are you taking God's gift of the Sabbath as, as uh, a day to... to to stop all your work and a time to rest and reflect. You see, you can, uh, you can take this as a gift from God. It's not something that's forced on us. But you take one day or a portion of that one day just reflecting on God's goodness in your life. Praying, spending time in His Word. That will be your Sabbath. Um, lest you break yourself down, wear yourself down. So that is something that we all can practice in our lives, this 2021. And so um, let's take that advice, one that I took many years ago and it has helped me even up to today. So friends, um, as we look towards 2021, let's look at the picture of the sluggard. And let's remind ourselves that, um, that we cannot be justified in all the things that we're busy at. And, 
and uh, when we take the time to rest take a break from everything that we're doing then we will reap the benefits we will realize our our goals our dreams if we take the day to take a break and and not take the way of the sluggard so friends um, wherever you are learn to live by the rhythms God has given as put into his creation so let's go to the second one so first thing how do you how do you not go into the way of the sluggard first you have to treat it as a character issue and not just a time management issue and second we learn to live according to the rhythms God has put into creation and the third one is this learn from the wisdom that God has put into creation not just to live by the rhythms but learn from the wisdom that God has built into creation God has built in some things into creation that um, to to help the sluggard. I know that because uh, in chapter six, let's go back. Uh, Proverbs six. This will make you smile a little bit. Proverbs six, verses six to eight. It will show us an object lesson. Lesson. And for those who are struggling not to be a sluggard. Chapter 6, verse 6, 7, and 8. It says, Go to the ant, O you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Uh, without any chief officer or ruler, he, 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 she prepares in the summer and gathers them for the harvest. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? How long will you rise from your sleep? It's like referring to, you know, the, the a little sleep, a little slumber. And and so in some of those verses, in verse 24, it says here, look at the ant. So if you want to deal with your being a sluggard, um, Um, I'm not talking about um, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the, the the ant here I built wisdom in that picture of an ant let's learn from the ant verse 7 without any chief any officer or ruler it does its work in other words the ant is a self-starter um, it just does its work even without a supervisor or manager above it, he just does his work. You know, without all the structures you have telling you to get to work, you just have to be a self-starter like the ant. Let's look at what the ant does. In verse 8, it prepares the bread in the summer. She works ahead. She makes sure she does, she makes her, the, the things done at the opportune time and so he doesn't miss the opportunity see if you don't want to stay like a sluggard you have to be like the ant um, without having to be told you can be a self-starter you can just self-motivate that's like a little ant it gets its work done one bit at a time until it accomplishes its goal you see when you're probably saying well you see i get that i that's what i should be but i can't do that especially in my current situation i'm at home um, things are not as conducive you know i have the small kids with me i can't do my job 
I can't study, I can't work. See if that's you, okay. I think I know what you should do, but I'm just not sure how we can do it. Here's where the good news of the gospel, friends, brothers and sisters, come in. The good news of the gospel says this. In the New Testament, God sends us good news, the gospel. And the good news is he sends us his son, Jesus. And Jesus is the full embodiment of wisdom, right? Paul writes about it and says, um, In whom all the treasures uh, in where all wisdom and knowledge are hidden. He is to us the wisdom of God. So Jesus comes in and he embodies wisdom. And he comes and says, you see, I am come to be your help. You cannot help yourselves, but I am here. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. You see, Jesus himself died on the cross. He died for our sins. And if you've come to the place where you've come to believe in the gospel, where you've said to yourself, I am someone who don't deserve his love, and you have accepted Christ, that free gift of, of forgiveness. He forgives you, and he cleanses you, he makes you his child, and he seals you with the Holy Spirit. See, the life of Jesus is now living in you, has the power to give you strength and to make you do anything in his name. See, um, um, sometimes we talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember uh, in, 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 in that passage, in one of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. In other words, when God comes to live inside of you and Jesus comes to live inside of you, He gives you self-control. He gives to you the self-control you need to live according to the rhythms that He has put into His creation. Which means that if you're uh, feeling like you're saying to yourself, I can't do this, God is telling you right now, nothing is too difficult for Him. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. See, sometimes you start off the year 2021 and you've started your Bible reading guide, your Bible reading, and you struggle. Then you ask God, Lord, will you give me the strength? Will you give me the grace? To be able to finish this, to be able to finish well, help me not be like the sluggard. Help me make the most of my time. See, my prayer for you, brothers and sisters, friends, is that God will give you the grace this 2021 to not live like the sluggard and to lean into the wisdom that is built into his creation and the wisdom of his creation and the power of his might he will allow you to live in his grace and his mercy we praise you lord we give you glory for all that you've done for us even in the past year 2020 has not been good for many of us we have experienced crisis tragedy and Lord, we look forward to 2021 with much hope, knowing that it is you, O Lord Jesus, who has given your life for us. And therefore, Lord, we can have the mind of Christ. We can have his character in us, and we could be like him. Transform us, O Lord, each and every day. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We praise you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hi, church. Thank you for joining us this morning. 
and we are always happy and we are always praying for you guys um, to for your protection and for your safety especially with these times uh, we're always here to support you and we're always thinking of you hopefully soon that we will be able to meet each other face to face and um, we'll be all together again uh, before we end the service just quick announcements we have a couple of people who are celebrating their birthdays this week and all the people will be posted here um, we also have um, a link for prayer requests so if you have any emergent prayer requests um, please click on the link below and our prayer group um, who is led by Tita Virgie will pray for you guys also, if you are a new believer who recently accepted Christ in your life and you'd like to learn more about GDP and our beliefs and our core values, uh, please check out this link right here and it will lead you to all the information you'd like to learn about GDP. Um, a leader, our leaders are always listening to your prayers and always, um, always open to any type of comments and suggestions so please reach out to our social media team um, through Facebook or Instagram and they would love to share with you any type of information you'd like to know more and just a declaration for our church family um, may the strength of God sustain us may the power of God preserve us may the hand of God protect us May the way of God direct us and may the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen. Again, once again, um, please join us every Sunday at 1030 a.m. And as we have our live stream every Sunday now, um, we are always here for prayers or any suggestions and that um we are always connected it may feel like we are so far away but the technology is allowing us to connect with one another so let's take advantage of it um again my name is Thea, and um thank you again for this morning for worshiping and uh, praying with us today thanks have a great day bye